take my chances for the Empire, Zeb. A few moments later. This is actually one of the most important scenes in Star Wars. Star Wars is no stranger to redemption arcs. People argue Vader's redemption is one of the best in cinema, and Kylo Ren's redemption is done really well for the most part. But there is an argument to be made that the redemption story of Agent Callus is one of the best in Star Wars. Now you may think that statement is heresy, but the redemption story of Agent Callus is much different than Vader's or Kylo's. Vader and Kylo redeemed themselves through sacrifice. Vader redeemed himself by saving his son, and Kylo redeemed himself by giving his life so Rey could have one. Now, as powerful as these redemption arcs are, one could argue that redemption through death and sacrifice is a bit of a cop-out. Vader and Kylo committed evil acts, some that to many are unforgivable. Vader killed a bunch of kids and arguably thousands of people, and Kylo Ren directly and indirectly killed the three main characters of the original trilogy. Now, is it fair that these characters get to sacrifice their lives and have everything forgiven? I'm not saying it is or isn't fair, but there is an interesting discussion nonetheless. I think it's undeniable though that the harder form of redemption is to atone for your mistakes. I'm gonna talk briefly about Avatar The Last Airbender. If you haven't seen the show and you don't want any spoilers, then skip to this timestamp. Prince Zuko in Avatar The Last Airbender arguably has the best redemption I've ever seen. Zuko spent all of the first season hunting the Avatar, spent the whole second season learning more about himself and the Fire Nation, and in the third season finally realized the Fire Nation was evil and joined the Avatar. But simply joining the good guys isn't going to redeem yourself. Zuko had to earn the redemption of Team Avatar. He went on very dangerous missions with Aang and Katara and helped them in many ways, and went on a near suicidal mission with Sokka to help save his father. After all that is when Zuko Zuko is redeemed in the eyes of his new friends. Now there's much more to Zuko's redemption story than just that, but those are the main things I wanted to mention. Let's get back to Agent Callus. It's during the third season that Callus officially joins the good guys and leaves the bad. But before we get into that atonement I mentioned earlier, we need to rewind the clocks all the way back to season 1. Callus is introduced as a standard Imperial officer. We see him as a bad guy, nothing too special. But what Dave Filoni wisely does is give us a reason to hate him personally. It is revealed that Callus essentially committed genocide against Zeb's people. Zeb is the last of his kind because of Callus. Genocide is something that is obviously awful, so it is easy for us to root against Callus. And for all of the first season and most of the second season, we see him the exact same way. Evil Imperial, clumsy officer, loses a lot, we're happy. But everything changes in the season 2 episode, The Honorable Ones. This episode begins no differently than any usual episode. The ghost crew is fighting the Empire, they run into Callus and fight some more. Callus and his rival Zeb are fighting, but end up stranded on the ice moon of Geonosis. Callus is injured, and the two of them are forced together to work if they want to survive. This is actually really smart by Dave Filoni. By putting them in this situation, you are forcing these characters to communicate with each other without the threat of them killing each other. This is the same reason why the concept of the Force Bond in The Last Jedi is so brilliant. Rey has every reason to kill Kylo the second she sees him after for the Force Awakens, and she even tries to do so when she sees him for the first time in The Last Jedi. But because it is introduced that they can't kill each other, they're forced to communicate with one another, and thus the relationship between Rey and Kylo is fleshed out. Going back to Callus, in this episode we learn a lot about him. Callus reveals that he was once part of a unit that got completely wiped out by a Lasat soldier. If you were Callus and you saw all of your friends murdered by someone, wouldn't you have a tough time trying? 
respecting other people that are a part of their culture. I'm not saying that what Callus did was right, but now we start to understand him. Zeb and Callus continue to work together, and they both manage to escape the pit they're in. The end of the episode is probably one of the most important scenes in Star Wars. Zeb and Callus agree to go their separate ways. Zeb goes back to the Ghost Crew, and Callus sees how much of a family they really are. They tell Zeb how much they missed him and how worried they were for him. When Callus goes back to the Empire, no one seems to care. He calls his fellow comrade, and there is no exchange other than formal greetings. The Empire didn't even know or care that he was gone. Callus goes back to his room alone. The juxtaposition of Zeb with his family and Callus alone in his room perfectly begins the redemption arc for Callus. This comparison also says a lot about the differences between the light and dark side. The rebellion, which is the symbol for the light side, is all about family and love, and by choosing the selfless path you will find joy. The dark side is all about greed and power, and by choosing the selfish path you will find yourself alone, with no one to share your life with. In a mere two minutes of screen time, one of the major themes about Star Wars is summarized with very little dialogue. Callus realized he was wrong to join the Empire, and his redemption arc began. Let's get back to the atonement I mentioned earlier. Callus can't just go to the Rebels and say, hey, I want to join you. He needs to start to build trust, and must realize that forgiveness isn't given in a second. It must be earned. For about the first half of Season 3, we are introduced to a new Fulcrum, and it is revealed later on that Fulcrum is Callus. Now, this isn't played as some kind of big reveal. It was a mystery that was kinda predictable. Which is fine. Just because something is predictable, that doesn't mean it's bad. Kanan and Ezra toy with him a little bit because they don't entirely trust him, which makes perfect sense. Throughout the season, Callus continues to help them until he is caught by Thrawn. Callus manages to escape in a rather silly way, but officially joins the rebels nonetheless. For the rest of the series, Callus isn't too important to the story. He does tag along with the rebels in their plan to liberate Lothal, and he does play a role in their plan, but nothing too important. And that's really the story of Agent Callus. There is one more thing about the way his story ends, which I think is very neat. In the rebels epilogue, Zeb takes Callus to the new Lasat homeworld, where he learns that the Lasat people aren't extinct and that they are thriving. There is one line that I think concludes Callus' story perfectly. When talking about the Lasats, it is said that Callus is welcomed as one of their own. It's a small detail that doesn't really matter all that much, but it makes me think back to that one episode in Season 2. Callus with the Empire felt all alone, like he had no family, but with the Rebels, he did have that family. It appears that he and Zeb have a sort of bromance going and I love that. But seeing Callus get along with the other Lasats and Zeb, I think sends a powerful message that isn't explored much in Star Wars, and that message is forgiveness. We've seen redemption in Vader and Kylo, but both times they were only redeemed in the eyes of one person, Luke with Vader and Rey with Kylo. Neither character really needed to earn forgiveness from anyone. With Callus and the Lasat people, Callus committed a terrible crime against their race, but it appears they they found a way to forgive him. Forgiveness can sometimes be harder than redemption, but seeing Zeb and the Lasat people forgive Callus sends a very powerful message. Forgiveness is a theme that I think should be explored more in Star Wars, and honestly is something us Star Wars fans can work on too. Thank you everyone so much for watching another one of my videos. I got plenty of Rebels content coming soon. Don't forget to join the Claude Squad, and I will see you guys next time.